Hey guys, it's Nurse Howie. So I just got done with an CVICU interview. I was not prepared. Here's why. And let me tell you how you can get ready for your CVICU interview and hopefully you get it because I don't think I'm going to make this one. <laughs> So everybody knows that CVICU nurses have a lot of knowledge with the heart and they really love cardio. And I knew all the pathophysiology of the cardio of and I did well on that. But here's one thing I really didn't do good at and it was probably because I was tired and more like I was lazy and I was procrastinating. So I didn't really brush up on this particular set of knowledge. But let me tell you about how the format of the interview went first. First, they said their hellos. Then they asked me about myself, of course. And so I already had a, a pre-planned sentences of what exactly my experiences were. And it was just very short within like three or four sentences. And then after that, I was, uh, I told them about my experiences, whether or not I did a lot of cardiac patients. And I just was very honest with them. I was a traveler, so I dealt with a lot of COVID patients and I did a lot of um, cardiac patients, but because I was a traveler and I was more jumping around, I also did more of a general breadth of uh, patients. So they were able to realize that I saw a lot of different patients with a lot of different um, uh, diseases, but not always cardio. So what they're looking for is that number one, they're not going to train you. So they were asking about how many patients that I saw had cardio and I told them about patients that I had that had a lot of heart failure. So they were asking about my demographic of patients, so my, my types of patient demographic that I had. Then they also asked about um, how many patients that I saw specifically cardiac. And then I told them about patients that had cabbages, uh, patients that I saw that were one-to-one, -one, and patients that were most specifically open heart. And I have to be honest with them, because of my nature of the job that I do, which is travel nursing, I of course fill in positions in every situation that um, requires an ICU nurse. And so, it's so loud out there. And so I had a lot of patients that were one-to-one, -one, um, VV ECMO, stuff like that. I actually didn't have a lot of VV ECMO. I had a lot of patients that were cardiac patients that involved, that they had cabbages, um, not so much open open heart, but the ones that they were looking for were nurses that had open heart experience. So because it was a uh, per diem position in the CVICU, they were looking for nurses that had that experience. I did not have it and I was honest about it. And I told them, no, I don't have a lot of um, open heart patients. I have a lot of heart patients, but not specifically open heart. And that's what they were looking for. So that's one of the big things that was really against me. Um, but they were honest about that and I was honest as well because they don't want to hire you and then all of a sudden you take on an open heart patient one to one and then you have no clue what you're doing, that's, that's the problem. But they did like the fact that I had Impala experience, that I had cabbage experience, that I had balloon pump experience and um, a swan gans experience. So they, they liked that. And after that as well, they had asked me if I had any questions. So here are some really good questions that you can ask um, employers that I've come up with. Is that one, how do you prepare your staff for COVID and how do you prepare them for a pandemic? And the nurse manager, you know, was able to say, hey, you know, a lot of our, our nurses are, are completely prepared. We weren't as affected by COVID down here in this city. So we didn't have that much trouble, but we always had enough PPE to go around. So that was good. And then the second one was that I, how, what are you looking for in a per diem nurse? So tailor that question to saying, what are you looking for in a new grad nurse? Or what are you looking for in a new hire? Stuff like that. Um, and I should have also asked them what their orientation experience was or what type of orientation that they do. Is it like a one week, two weeks, or just like one day? And again, because of the, the interview is for a per diem interview, they were not looking at training anybody. They were looking for somebody who was ready from the get-go, who was ready to be able to take on any patients right away. And that included open heart, impellas, cabbages, balloon pumps, and swan gans catheters. Then after that, they did the assessment, the knowledge assessment. And um, they asked me about the anatomy physiology of the heart. For example, how do you define preload? How do you define afterload? What is the <laughs> equation for CO? Of course, I knocked that out of the park. Equation for CO is heart rate times SV. Preload is defined as a, a filling of the blood volume that determines the pressure on the right the right heart 
for the end diastolic pressure and then afterload is the amount of pressure that the heart has to overcome in order to be able to have that cardiac output based on SVR, uh, systemic vascular resistance, stuff like that. And they asked me for the amount of pressures that they were looking for. So let's say what's the pressure in a pulmonary artery, what's the pressure in the left ventricular and diastolic pressure. And so I told them that's how you, you can determine the, the CVP based on the what uh, the PCWP, which is the wedge pressure, also known as a pulmonary artery or occlusive pressure. And then she was kind of pointing me like, well, how can you measure CVP indirectly without using a swan gas catheter? And it took me a little bit, like 10 seconds. And I was like, oh, you were just asking how to measure um, CVP indirectly. I was like, well, just the blood pressure, <laughs> the non-invasive blood pressure. So that I hit that out of the park. What she got me on though was the drips. Oh my God, I don't know why I forgot to study my drips. Um, I just was, actually I did know because I kind of pain blocked it out of my head, but I was so worried about the different types of surgeries that they were gonna quiz me on that I didn't re-up and re-brush uh, myself, my knowledge on the drips. Oh God, so it wasn't just drips that I usually deal with, which is just like pressors. Um, sedation, sedation drips, this was all vasoactive drips. So there was like asking uh, what's milirinone used for, dobutamine, dopamine, levo, presidex, and vasopressin. And then they asked me, they asked, they like, can you just tell me what they do and what receptors they act on? That's what got me. I completely forgot the receptors. I know that dopamine is more alpha receptor, but then, you know, levo is more of a mix. Uh, I still don't remember now and I still have to brush up on that but guys if you are interviewing for the CVICU position really really know your your drips so again this video is more for me next time I interview for CVICU but and everybody should know that I don't know why I didn't even think of it Ugh. but yeah if you don't know your surgeries you definitely need to know your drips you know you should really know both REMS so of course, you know, really read up on Bohar. Those of you who are at ECVIC, you know what that book is. It's the Bible of Cardiovascular. And so if you know your surgeries, you should also know your drips because when you're gonna be getting somebody's open heart and that's one-to-one, -one, you really need to know why you're giving this drip, why you're titrating it. And then they weren't really looking so much for the dosage amount, and um, but they were looking more for the indication and where it acts on the body, for example, receptors, how it really affects the receptors. So they just wanted a fast, like, what do we use? Why do we use neosinephrine versus levo versus vasopressin? Why do we use this? Why do we use the dobutamine? Why do we use dopamine? You know, so like, you know, for example, dobutamine, we want to use on somebody that's not really affected as much with the heart rate, uh, somebody who has um, a good systolic heart, heart pressure, but they're still having heart failure, then we're going to use dobutamine versus bilirinone stuff like that. I completely had had that interview before, um, those questions before, and I just was not prepared. At least I did not prepared as I thought I was. So yeah, definitely. So here's a review. Definitely need to know, have a pre, uh, preset, uh, preset response to tell me about yourself and do it quick. Don't ramble on. Um, do it in about four or five sentences and then tell me about your experiences with cardiac patients. Personally, your experience is not the experiences of the unit. Um, and if you don't have an experience with a certain procedure, tell them so. But keep in mind that if they're hiring you based on whatever stipulations that they're hiring you under, for example, if they're hiring you per diem rather than a new hire or a new grad nurse, they're going to expect you to have all these experiences already down and ready to go. So I need to read up on that, on the surgeries, various surgeries, especially hope and heart, and then re read on my um, on my swan gans not so much my crrt but more of like my swan gans catheters my impellas my balloon pumps and my vats then after that we went over questions for them and so talk about those questions that i said that i mentioned ask them how they were able to prepare for the covid situation and for the pandemic you're going to ask them about what they're looking for for a good hire specifically to your situation whether it's a new grad or a seasoned per diem nurse and then ask them, what do you think of the uh, polarizing question? Like, what do you think of the Redondo Vat hearing where the nurse was mistaking Vecuronium for Versed and the nurse is uh, currently undergoing under criminal charges. So really, really, and that was, a, <laughs> that was a game changer for her. And then really get to know your anatomy physiology of the heart. Uh, definitely know your 
the reasons what, what they are, left ventricular pressure, know what preload, afterload, of course, the equation of CO is know the pressures of the different parts of the heart, know the pressure right atrial pressure, CVP, wedge pressure, stuff like that, and know your drips. Know your drips like the drips that you really don't, that I don't really see as much, which is uh, milrinone, dibutamine, dopamine, levo, neo, vasopressin, and of course your other sedation drips, but mostly those kind of active drips because as a CVICU nurse, duh, howie. You really need to know those drips and you don't need to know exactly the parameters of the dosaging or the orders of how you titrate because they they may change from hospital to hospital but at least know two things one the indication of that of that drip and then two where it acts upon specifically what receptor it acts upon and between those two know exactly what the difference between the choice of getting one drip over another and that's it. That is a CV ICU interview. I hope this helps you out. Uh, please let me know if you, it helped you out. Uh, I definitely will try again <laughs> for a CV ICU position. I already know that I'm probably not going to get this one, but my hopes are up and I've learned a lot from this interview. I'm definitely getting better. All right, there's Howie out. Good luck and let me know. Like and subscribe. Let me know what you want to see in the comments and let me know if this helped you. All right, bye guys. Uh, so uh, I had a COVID patient that was more hidden um, and then I had another patient that was an acute GI bleed and uh, that acute GI bleed was more established. So I was taking care of my COVID patient first because he was desaturating and starting to buck the vent. So um, I had a new grad nurse. I was working as a resource nurse or a breaker or whatever you call it. And she was more pushing me to go into the acute GI bleed. And I said, okay, but let me take care of airway first. And she goes, no, you should really see the GI bleed. And I went there and I already did my assessment. <clears throat> and so when I had a chance, I went to go help. I want to go take care of my um, COVID patient, settled him down. And then went to go, went to go to talk to the GI bleed patient. And then I went and talked to the resource nurse and said, hey, listen, I'm really busy and I could really use your help. Um, I know you have a couple of extra hands available. If you do, I would really appreciate it. Um, but just so you know, I would just like to be on the same page as you as far as the GI bleed goes because uh, his, G his hemoglobin was 8, it was above 7, and he is actually mentating well. Um, he is not tired and he is not on any oxygen support. And as well as, um, I've taken all the labs as well. So if you could take the rest of the patient's labs, that would really help me out but I really have to take care of my more acute patient, which I think is in that COVID isolation room. And so she kind of got it, you know, she saw my reasonings behind it, but if there's, I told her if there's anything else that you see, for example, if the patient's mentation changes, please let me know and I will make that patient the priority. So instead of kind of going against each other, we, I just had to kind of not confront her, but just say, hey, you know, this is where I'm at, where are you at? how can we you know sync together and um she was able to really settle in both patients right away because the gi bleed patient um just came in as an admit and so he was completely behind as well so she helped me catch up and that's how we resolved that situation um and then uh the next thing we're going to add about is uh medications mm -hmm. so if i ask a specific medication the two things that i'm looking for is the actual effect that the medication has on the body okay and Necessarily, what receptor it responds on. Okay? okay. So, as an example, if I was to ask you about metoprolol, I would uh, look for an answer of metoprolol um, decrease your heart rate and decrease your blood pressure, and it is a beta blocker. Okay. All right. So, I don't need dosing. I don't need anything else. Just very simply, what it does and what receptor it works on. Okay. So, the first medication is dobutamine. Um, it is an ino inotrope, and uh, it's used for. It's, we used to use it to raise blood pressure on patients that have a normal diastolic uh, pressure, and um, I don't exactly know what receptor currently because we don't use it that That's often. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. What about nipride? Uh, nipride will use it to lower blood pressure, and. Um, I think it works with the because it was with the heart. It's um, uh, the beta receptors as well. Okay. What about levofed? Uh, levofed, we use that to um, 
Uh, sorry, I'm dumb. <laughs> of course, it's, it's to raise blood pressure. It's a vasopressor. Um, and that's with okay. the um, alpha receptors. Okay. And then what about nitroglycerin? Uh, nitro, we use it to lower blood pressure, but we also work, sorry, I just know that it, it affects uh, more of the systemic circulation rather than the direct heart. Okay. Uh, what is the difference? Why would you use nitro versus nitride? Uh, based on the heart rate, I okay. think um, some, it'll either act... Um, more systemic versus uh, direct. So if a patient, let's say, is having trouble and they need to be able to dilate the, um, the systemic vasculature, then they will use um, nitro, I think. Okay. Um, what about milrinone? Uh, milrinone. Hmm. Instead of a... Uh, no, sorry, I haven't used that in a long time. That's okay. That's okay. And then um, what about neosinephrine? Uh, so neo or phenylephrine is what we'll use to also increase blood pressure, but we use this, everybody uh, seems to be going that direction more uh, because also based on heart rate, they want to, if they don't want to use levo, they'll use neo. Um, and what receptor does it work on? I think that's alpha. Okay. I think that's alpha receptors. And then, what about dopamine? Uh, dopamine is, I think this is a straight alpha receptor, and um, that will raise blood pressure. Okay. At different uh, levels, does dopamine do different things? Dopamine? Uh, I know it off the top, back of my head, I know at a certain dose, it's going to be changed the indication, but I'm tired. I don't remember. Sorry. No worries. Um, and then what about vasopressin? Uh, vasopressin, uh, we'll use that if the patient needs help with um, uh, systemic vascular support, usually with people who are very septic. Uh, usually we don't titrate that, it just stays at 0 0.04. Um, so there's just an, for me, what I've seen is that it's just an added benefit in order to support somebody that has um, really, really low blood pressure, but it's never used on its own. Okay. And what is the difference? Why would, what is the indication or why would you use Neo versus Levo versus Vaso? Uh, so Neo, like I said, um, I we would use Levo if they didn't have a problem with their heart rate, but if their heart rate started to become a little bit too fast, then we prefer Neo. Um, and then, um, uh, with vasopressin, if the patient is having a low SVR, um, then we'd use as, uh, uh, vasopressin as kind of more of a support rather than by itself. Okay. okay. Perfect. Those are all of our questions. Um, any other questions that have come up for you as we were chatting that you'd like to ask? Uh, no, I'm okay. Okay, awesome. Uh, hopefully we didn't stress you out too much with a nice deep breath uh, after that assessment. Yes. Um, and we are always making decisions, probably not uh, not even next Friday, but the Friday after that, because just we have a, a bunch of people to interview. Okay. Um, so we will be getting back to you in the next two weeks. You will receive a, um, a request for references, so please make sure to get those in as soon as possible. Okay. Um, because often that is the limiting factor for us in running a decision. Oh, I see. Um, so yeah, so we'll be in touch in uh, the next few weeks with you. All right, Howie, thanks so much for joining Thank us you, this morning. Thank you, guys. Okay. Have right. a great day. Bye. Fuck. <laughs> oh, God, I'm pressing these pressers.